My name is Julie Pearson Littlefender. Today is Wednesday, March 22nd, and I'm interviewing Adeline Kachishana Dubois. Kachishana Dubois. Thank you. Kachishana Dubois for the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at Oklahoma State University. Adeline, you're Sac and Fox, Shawnee, and Potawatomi. And Kickapoo. And Kickapoo. You were one of the early Native fashion designers here in Oklahoma, maybe best known for your ribbon shirts. And you were active in the markets from the late 60s until maybe 2009, but you still can't retire because you keep getting requests for mm -hmm. ribbon shirts mm -hmm. and other clothing items, many of which have been worn by celebrities. So thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. Kachishano Du Bois. Du Bois. Thank you. Kachishana Du Bois. Where were you born and where did you grow up? I think I gave the French pronunciation of that. <laughs> where were you born and where did you grow up? <laughs> I was born at my grandfather's house, east of Meeker. And uh, he was uh, Sack and Fox. And, uh, I was born at home, and I never could say my name. Can I say it? Sure. Adeline Cacciano, and uh, and so I was always known as Tiny K. Tiny K. <laughs> that was a mouthful. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> so born at your grandfather's house, what did your folks do for a living? You know, or what kinds of work? It was just farm work. Farm work. Mm -hmm. My father died when I was 13. Oh. But he had TB. And, uh, but uh, I helped him all the time. And, uh, but we we did move to Wichita, and he worked at what is that? The, in the airplane industry, yeah, there, yeah. yeah, Boeing. Boeing. <laughs> oh, so you lived in Wichita a few years. Yeah. What years? What, how old were you? Forty-one, forty-two. Okay. <laughs> After the, when the war started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, oh gosh. Did you have any siblings? Brothers or sisters? I had, uh, uh, two sisters and two brothers. Okay. They're all gone. And you were close to your grandparents on that side? Your um, I was close to my grandfather. On your dad's side? On my mother's on side. On your mother's side, yes. Okay. But, uh, My my grandmother's name was Dolly. She was Kickapoo, mm -hmm. and I always liked her. But you know, then they were gone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, but my mother, wherever we went, she had a sewing machine. She made us sit down and sew. I have the pattern that she made for us to sew on. And so I started sewing. <laughs> and this was you and your sisters? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so how early did you start sewing? I wasn't in school. <laughs> <laughs> I have that pattern around here somewhere. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a dog. <laughs> it, it's a quilt pattern. And you turn the raw edges under and sew it. Right. Okay. It was so cute. <laughs> That's neat. <laughs> so you had that that creative element there in your home. Mm -hmm. Were there any like family or extended family who were involved with art or making things that... No. Okay. I don't think anybody did anything except mm -hmm. my mother. Mm -hmm. She sewed and made her clothes and everything. 
Because, you know, back then, nobody wore jeans. Right. Made your clothes Just, uh -huh. for all of mm -hmm. you. And I just really liked that. And once I started sewing, you know, after I got older, and uh, I liked that. And when I was in the Air Force, I had, uh, I sewed everybody's stripes on, or if they had a tear in their clothes, or I'd, <laughs> they had a sewing machine in uh, there. and. I, I would sew everybody's little torn things, <laughs> some of their stripes on and all of that, but it was just, just something that I always did. So I never did work. Well, I did work at Tinkerfield one time for a little while. Then I got married and had all my kids, and um, and then I had to sew. Well, I'm going to back up just, just a little. Um, what do you think your first experience was of seeing Native art? I never thought about it. You know, back then, you'd just try to get by and live. Mm -hmm. And as you were making your little um, quilt pillows with the dog, <laughs> image. Were you also uh, putting together things maybe for a doll or were you making your own little patterns? Were you that into it or were you just no, sort of... No. Then I just thought, all, all I thought about was that dog. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mama said. <laughs> Get right. this done. <laughs> um, how about being around the uh, You've got this multi-tribal background, but being around language very much growing up, spoken. Well, they, um, it was always, it was always Indian. Oh, I was going to, I don't need to have anybody here. But I have some old pictures that we lived in an Indian village, mm -hmm. uh, West Shoshone, the Kickapoo village, mm -hmm. and uh, and it was their Indian and people were house houses and speaking Kickapoo. Yeah, there was, and that was you were around that the was language. It, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Then I had to go to school. Talk about that a little. <laughs> <laughs> and that was there in Meeker at first. No, it was at uh, Acme. Okay. That little, little country school, mm -hmm. uh, West Shawnee, and uh, and that's where everybody went, and had to walk to school. We walked a mile, and uh, uh, but see, I couldn't say my name, and but Grandpa always called me Tiny, and always call me Tiny K. And when we'd come to Shawnee, well, I was always with Grandpa, and I don't, mother went somewhere else and and did all the shopping and all of that with uh, my sister. So, my sister was older than me, and then I have a had a sister younger than me and two brothers younger than me. Did you enjoy school at Acme, or not so much? Well, enjoy school. <laughs> uh, I had a a friend that always took care of me, and she was, uh, you know, like you're in the first grade, and she was in the eighth grade, and uh, at recess she always took care of me, and and there was always somebody like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then took you under her wing and mm -hmm. made sure. Mm -hmm. That's good. Did you have any subjects that you liked at school? I think I liked to write. Mm -hmm. Learn how to write. Mm -hmm. And because 
You know, they didn't teach you ABCs when you're at home. Mm -hmm. And you go to school and they're trying to teach you ABCs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I tried to learn them. And, uh, and then to meet other kids mm -hmm. was always interesting. From different backgrounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But over there at Acme, there was a lot of Indian kids there. Because mm -hmm. that area was Kickapoo. Right. And uh, and Dad, he worked at the golf course. Not too far from Acme. Mm-hmm. But my sister and I, we always walked to school. We walked through the ditches, <laughs> woods. Right. <laughs> <laughs> did you like drawing in school, or did you have the opportunity to do any of that? Well, I liked drawing, but I don't think we ever mm -hmm. did much. Mm -hmm. No. And then what happened when, um, after Acme, what was the next place that you either went to school or the next move? <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh. Well, I didn't know we was going to do this. <laughs> you know, after you get 80, you can't think. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> we don't have to be 80 to, <laughs> to think, hmm, what was it? <laughs> we went to McLeod. Okay. After McLeod. And we were living near the town of McLeod or in McLeod? Um, Where did we live? We lived in a house close to the Kickapoo village and the bus came by and picked us up. Okay. And um, Because we went to Dale one time. Maybe that was when we went to Dale. <laughs> we, 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 been, we went to Acme, Dale, McLeod, Hera. Okay. And All Hera's like high school? Is that the high yeah, school Yeah, it was after we years. came back from uh, uh, Kansas. And after the war. Right. And uh, went to Hera. Do you remember living in Kansas and your impressions? Because that was a big culture change. Yes, yes. And I in really Wichita. learned how to play play ball. And, okay. Uh, and so Softball? I got to, yeah. Got to play ball. I thought, well, that was just kind of fun, you know. And I, oh, gosh, I think it was fourth grade. We probably lived up there two years or something like that. 41, 42. Were you playing uh, a position that you especially liked? Um, I, I could, I could play, I liked shortstop, but uh, uh, when, uh, when Dad was able to, uh, we had softball games at, at our house because we had a ball diamond. Everybody came in a wagon with their horses pulling them and, uh, right. and came and we played ball every Sunday. How fun. And, and Dad would pitch and, and everybody, uh, uh, everybody played, old, young, mm -hmm. whatever. And every Sunday we always played ball. And so I loved ball. Playing ball, right? And what was the best thing that when I was in the Air Force, I was in Baltimore, and the Orioles came to town, 
and I went to every ball game they had. <laughs> oh, gosh, I had, and so they got a bus to take everybody to the ballpark whenever the ball games were going on, on, and so I got to see every ball game, and, but I played basketball when I was in the Air Force up there, and, uh, uh, I said, well, I can't play basketball. I never played basketball. <laughs> and uh, But my sister did. She was real good. <laughs> and they said, well, you know the game. And they had these two real giant tall girls. And uh, they said, you know the game, and we're going to have these two girls playing forward, and you just throw the ball to them. <laughs> and so I did. We went all over the East Coast. My goodness. And either flying mm -hmm. or on a bus, like to New York City or mm -hmm. down south to past uh, Washington, D.C., down to Virginia, and, you know, just mm -hmm. all around the coast there and, uh, and just played ball. And I thought that was so fun. You could see the country. Mm -hmm. And I never saw a place like it. Limestone, Maine. You know, it's way up there in that little corner. How did you end up in the Air Force? Oh. <laughs> I had this friend that says, uh, I'm going to join the Air Force. Would you go to Oklahoma City with me? And this is right after high school. Yeah, I guess. Uh -huh. okay. because we got a job at, uh, uh, oh, what's the name of that place there in Shawnee? Anyway, they went out of business, and all us engineering girls were working there, and so she says she wanted to join the Air Force, and uh, so we, back then you have to get on the bus and go to Oklahoma City, and so we did that, and went up there, and went to the post office and took those tests, <laughs> <laughs> and she failed, and I passed. <laughs> And my mother sat there for a long time with this real mad look on her face, and I said, you know, I didn't say anything. Well, this stuff came in the mail, you know, this big envelope, and said I passed and to be there at a certain time. And, and then pretty soon she says, well, if that's what you want to do, we'll take you up there. And so there I was. And I didn't want to tell her, no, 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 I don't want to go. Because <laughs> it hadn't been your idea, no, and you didn't really know yeah. what to expect. You and, just had passed So we went, she took took me up there. They said to be on that train and had a place for me to sleep and one of those nice places to sleep on a train going down to San Antonio. And so I went down there. And I got down there, and and, uh, and I thought, oh gosh, I'm not going to be able to do this. But because uh, uh, it was basic training and yeah, kind of uh, rough, and that everybody was telling me everything that I was going to have to do, and I went, oh my goodness, I won't be able to do that because I was just a little little girl, you know. Mm -hmm. I would weigh to 101, and in when I was a senior, and everybody was bigger than me, even my little sister was bigger than me. And uh, but I went down there, and then somebody, I just told myself, I'm not going to believe anything anybody tells me. And I got down there, and uh, and somebody, this one guy in the mess hall says, "Is anybody from Oklahoma?" And I, uh, yes, I am. And he said. There was an earthquake up there, and I thought, mm, I don't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got a letter from my mother who said there was an earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> oh, but everybody told me everything that was I was going to have to do, you know, those 10-mile marches mm -hmm. and and uh, KP and and cleaning and everything and and uh, going, putting the gas mask on and going through that gas chamber and and uh, and I got down there 
and I got to playing ball, and uh, I would say, yeah, first batter, and they'd let me be first batter because I was so short and little. And so I stayed in bats the whole time. <laughs> and then they made me, you know, play in workup. Right. And so they made me start from the uh, the end there in the <laughs> outfield and, and work up. And I'd work up and stay in bats the rest of the time. And I just played ball and had so much fun. And never had to go through the gas chamber. Never had to go... Um, go on those 10 miles hikes and uh because you were an athlete and you were busy no with the i don't know so. what happened huh. and everybody told me i was going to have to do that and uh but i i didn't have to what and was the hardest I, part of it well they said well the weather or something you know oh. or uh the gas chambers broke or you know something like that and then uh we were marching one time, and being short, I was way in the back there, and and looking at everybody marching along there, trying to march, and their heads was just bobbing up and down. I got absolutely hysterical. I just I just could not help it. And they stopped the the whatever her name was, <laughs> stopped, and said, "This person, this row second row." or row 10, and fourth person over or something, and everybody says, catch, that's you. And and I had, so I had to go out and, and see what she wanted. <laughs> she made me march by myself. <laughs> what is the matter with you? I said, I was, I was, I, I was just absolutely hysterical just watching those heads bob up and down. Uh -huh. Oh my From goodness! From that perspective, and, <laughs> but they made me do that. And the last time, the last week of uh, basic training, they uh, the CO called me in, and, uh, and everybody says, "Catch the CO wants to see you," and uh, so I went over there and did all this I was supposed to, and, and sat down there, and and she said. Well, the reason why I called you in was because I want you to play uh, softball for the Air Force. <laughs> and I said, well, where will I be stationed, ma'am? <laughs> she said, uh, here in San Antonio. I said, no. And she says, what? I said, no. Why? Because everybody talks Mexican to me. <laughs> She goes, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so, anyway, they sent me to uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Okay. And I uh, went up there for tech school. <laughs> and, and I really liked that and uh, got to go to the Frontier Days, Cheyenne mm -hmm. Frontier Days Rodeo. And, right. and that was, that was lots of fun. And, and. You know, being a clerk type is... Is that you know, what you focused on in tech school? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. and, <clears throat> uh, and they throwed in a little supply there since Tinkerfield was close. They said you could get a job over there. And, and so after that, they sent me to Baltimore. And Baltimore, there's no base in Baltimore. And so anyway, it was an Army base. And the Air Force just worked downtown in these big buildings, nice buildings. And um, so I went up there. But they had their Air Force team there. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it was the uh, Air Research and Development Command. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, w I was there for about a month, and, and they said uh, I was working in uh, budget and accounting. And uh, uh, they said, uh, catch. The, the AG wants to see you. And I thought, oh my goodness, what did I do? And so I went up there to see him, and uh, it was Colonel Cooper from Shawnee, Gordon Cooper's dad. Oh, yeah. wow. And so <laughs> he small talked, world. <laughs> he talked to me, and, and, uh, and, you know, anything that he could do to help me, be, just let him know. And, 
or he would know, and uh, and he did. Uh, my stepfather was sick, and uh, and I sat down at my desk, and my mother wrote me a letter, and uh, and I cried, and uh, and they told the AG they must have mm -hmm. because I got a flight home. Wow. On a B-24. And, you know, I didn't know not everybody could do that. Right. They said, well, how did you manage to get a flight home? I <sighs> said, well, I don't know. I, I was busy thinking about my stepfather. He was mm -hmm. just a nice man. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then when, when he passed away, about two weeks later, uh, my boss asked me if I wanted to go home. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I already told him goodbye. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't go home. But it was just, it was just interesting things. You know, I look back on it and see what happened on it. Oh my goodness. It was just... You were watched out for there too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a good time and and come home and and I wanted to I worked at Tinkerfield. And once in a while you mentioned you're sewing somebody's insignia on yeah. for them, but uh -huh. that's all the sewing you're doing at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was busy playing ball. <laughs> <laughs> and worked at Tinker and then how did you meet your husband Larry? Oh. Uh, Well, I had all these things that happened to me, and then I moved to Meeker, and uh, uh, that was a bad time of my mm -hmm. life, except that my kids and I had a really good time, and uh, I had Paul and John and Alice, and uh, we moved to Beaker, and I started sewing for, for people, and uh, uh, it was uh, everything from weddings to uh, in school, mm -hmm. uh, all the cheerleaders or pet club and princess for this and that and everything right. and uh, they even got my daughter to be the little flower girl and, <laughs> and you could be at home with your kids your yes. young kids when mm -hmm. you were working mm -hmm. yes and I had a treadle sewing machine and a friend of mine she says I want you to take that sewing machine in I'm going to take you to town and mm -hmm. we're going to get this turned into electric sewing machine and she did that's a lot of work to be doing that with a treadle. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I was used to it. <laughs> Strong legs. <laughs> uh, but I had, you know, I just had a good time sewing, just mm -hmm. sewing mm -hmm. everything. And, and then I got to doing uh, ribbon shirts. And, so and how did that them. happen? I mean, you were occasionally doing Indian clothing for people who requested it. You were mm -hmm, doing mm -hmm. some commissions for princesses. Yeah. But how did you get into the idea of maybe doing some more, almost getting into native fashion kind mm -hmm. of stuff? Well, uh, at that time, it was easy because everybody wanted, mm -hmm. you know, every they wore those shirts right. all the time. Right. And uh, then when I got to sewing, and I, I got the, I thought, well, I can do that, you know. I, I made one for my my kids and and for my boys, and so I started doing that, and people found out, and and uh, and there I was making those shirts and Indian dresses and shawls mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and whatever. And you came from the perfect background in a way with the ribbon work and the applique background. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But I had an aunt that uh, gave me all her old patterns besides my mother's mm. old patterns mm -hmm. and I still have them around here and 
and use those and so it was just all there to be used. What was one of your favorite things to make during that time? Your favorite clothing item to make? Probably the ribbon shirts. Probably the ribbon shirts. Uh -huh. And you were creative with them. You um, didn't just stick to um, some of the more traditional forms of ribbon shirt. Can you talk about that a little? You did some experimenting later on with you. Yeah, it was, um, you know, after a while you do the same thing over and over and over. You want to do something different or even a different kind of uh, fabric. Mm -hmm. And that was always interesting. But, you know, when you get to sewing, you just want to do everything. Some that, variety. Or, or something different. Was, well, how will this look, you know? And, so and, when you got your materials, did you tend to, like, try to stock up at sales? Or did you ask people? You pretty much chose the materials. You didn't have people necessarily no, bring they them. brought their own. They fabric. brought their own, uh, okay. Because I was on welfare at that time. Yeah, yeah. And so they brought their own okay. fabric, and it okay. was all right. And, uh, but, you know, adding to that, my sewing really helped us along there. Mm -hmm. And uh, when my uh, daughter started to school, she had a new dress for for a month. <laughs> <laughs> and and my boys, you know, they just wore T-shirts. But after a while, I started making them shirts, and they really liked that. And my son would wear his ribbon shirt to school until mm -hmm. he just wore it out. <laughs> and I've got it in the trunk in there, you know. And uh, I asked him if he wanted a new one. And he said, No, I'll just wear this one. And, and he was, I asked him if he wanted it not too long ago, and he says, no, you just keep it. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, it was just interesting. And just like uh, this one little girl, my cousin's little granddaughter, uh, she wanted a new dress, but she had one that was two-pieced and been kind of a, a little tummy sticking out there. Those dresses don't fit good mm -hmm. on those kids. And so I made her that dress there that just hung down straight. Oh. And she put that on, she would not take it off. <laughs> and so I think I made all those little kickaboo girls <laughs> dresses. <laughs> oh, that's great. But, you know, you just thinking about sewing. Right. When did you do your first Native Art Market? And how did you get the idea of doing a show? Did somebody say to you, well, you ought to take your clothes and sell them well, in a market? I, I think the, uh, where did I go? Mm. Well, I know I, I did a show for the Kickapoos you did a fashion show for the tribe uh -huh, mm -hmm. in your early days when you mm -hmm. and that was probably kind of that's way more work than just sewing can you talk about that? <laughs> getting your models and deciding who's going to go first yeah, I said well get somebody to model and, <laughs> and but you know whenever you have a, a skirt with elastic in it Mm -hmm. But have all the ribbon work done on that, and just say, if they don't have a blouse, if they got a blouse, this color, just wear it. Right. They can model the mm -hmm. skirts. Mm -hmm. And then the skirts will fit everybody's, right. since they have a elastic in the waist. And and you know, Indian clothes did not have elastic in the waist. Mm -hmm. And. You always had to put them over there and pin them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did do a fashion show for the uh, American Indian Symposium, I remember, when it was starting in some of the early mm -hmm. days. Was that the first time you were around other Native, like, fashion people who were making clothing, but not just making, you know, um, clothing for powwows or something? They were doing more fashion statements? 
Well, I had this, uh, what was her name? Oh. From Miami. What uh, was her name? Ardina Moore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, we did fashion shows together. Do you met her at a show? Uh -huh. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, or at Red Earth. And became probably. friends. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I went to, um, I seemed like I did a lot of fashion shows for Red Earth and uh, and did one in Santa Fe and and then uh, uh, oh those those ladies um, that had to, had me make the shawls for the uh, ballerinas yes and that was. What was what was that? Well, um, and you made shawls for the five Indian ballerinas uh -huh. who probably, who might have come in at the time that the mural was finished. Is what I'm thinking. It might have been Betty Price or, in conjunction yeah, with the Oklahoma mm -hmm. Arts Council, mm -hmm. probably. Because the the fashion show was up there at that one building that nobody ever went there. Right. For right. a show. So it was probably in conjunction with the opening of that mural, is what uh -huh, I'm thinking. Uh -huh. yeah. that's, and that's a wonderful picture you showed me of the ballerinas with their And there's the picture of the ballerinas shawls. signed for me. Right, right. And, but they were just all so nice, and it was just interesting to uh, meet those ladies. Did Ardina give you some tips? Did she take pictures of models wearing her clothing? How? You decided that that was kind of a good way to market your work, is to have pictures of people wearing items that you made. Or did you just come up with that on your own? Well, I think uh, I really didn't want to do that because it was going to be too much trouble. Because mm. I sold so much before I went modeling. and. Uh -huh. And it was just that they said people wanted to see my Indian clothes, and so okay, well, give me some models. Okay, <laughs> you kind of got pushed into. <laughs> <laughs> and so but it always worked out all right, no matter where I right. went, because I was in Tulsa and, and Tahlequah. And it seemed like a lot of gosh, I hadn't thought about that in a long time. Do you do you think you did more than like five shows a year? Do you think that four to five uh, shows a year? No, I'm okay, maybe. Because with all your sewing, two, uh -huh, maybe two or two, three. Two and or three. I thought, well, okay. I can't do that. Then. Well, I, I went down to the Weeboka, and those ladies wanted me to do a show. I would just tell them, just give me some models. Uh huh. Uh huh. And they always wanted wanted to model. So. <laughs> when you did do an art market, how did you know, like, how many shirts to bring or how many skirts to bring? Was it just? Whatever you got done, or did you plan it out pretty? No, just carefully. Just whatever I got done, and it usually took me two days to make a ribbon shirt. You know, like mm -hmm. like this this one here. Yeah. And beautiful. then I did the. Uh, uh, this was the most popular, though. You know, this one. Right. Sack and fox. Right. Uh, my husband had a had the uh, Potawatomi shirt on. Okay. Down in Arizona, and uh, uh, and the Kickapoos, I, I made a lot of their shirts, and uh, but I tried to have have some on hand, mm -hmm. but I found out that uh, uh, I couldn't make small ribbon shirts; they had to be huge, and then everybody found out I made big ribbon shirts and they always came and bought them. So it was better if you were stocked with larger ribbon mm -hmm. shirts? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
So who are some of the um, celebrities that have bought your shirts? <laughs> you have some great stories <laughs> with them. <laughs> well, Studi, he was just funny. And then he had to have a shirt for his son. Right. And, uh, but uh, he always gave me, what's that other guy's name? What was that other See. guy? I think you mentioned Michael Horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then shawls we've already talked about the five Indian ballerinas but there was another uh, well known TV star that you made a shawl for <laughs> who was that? <laughs> well had Elaine Miles mm -hmm. and um uh, Did you get to visit much with her, or was it oh, yes. okay? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She was fun to talk to. <laughs> but uh, uh, and then that state representative from Shawnee, I can't even think of his name. And uh, he came there read her as one time, and and uh, and asked me where I was from. I told him Shawnee, and he told me who he was. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and so. Uh, uh, he said, you know, wanted to know if he could fit one of those ribbon shirts. And I said, well, sure. <laughs> and, you know, I can just look at them and see what what size they would wear. And right. I picked one out and just how about this one? And he tried it on and, and he bought it. That's I can't even think of his name. In but, terms of, of how you set up your booth and display clothing, that's kind of an art in itself, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's not like you can lay something out on a table, mm -hmm. just... Well, I made myself a, uh, a cloth out of double knit and put a design around it. And, mm. and it just, it was white and had a red design. <laughs> oh, how pretty, yeah. And uh, made the table stand what out. What did I do with it? And and that helped. And then and then just to line I put my ribbon shirts, folded them up and put them in a in a clear plastic bag. Okay. So you know Oh, kinda of like the store almost like mm -hmm. they look at the store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and they liked that, you know, okay. that everybody didn't touch them and, and I yes. had uh, different sizes out and uh, but uh, I could just look at them and see what size they would wear and right all of that and, and direct them and even even the big guys and the, because they didn't think they would find anything you mm -hmm. know and they were so happy to find something <laughs> and I said I told them I said well you know these shirts will last forever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they do because you don't wear them out right. Right. And so they, and then they're washable. Mm -hmm. Wash them, and so they like that. But that that was my best seller though. Was <laughs> big ribbon shirts. Is it is it harder? Um, I don't know if your favorite material is a certain type of cotton, but is it harder to find good quality material now than it used to be? I don't buy much anymore but mm -hmm. uh, it seems it seems to be all right you mm -hmm. know and I bring mm -hmm. it home and I wash a piece to see if it's going to wash all right and but you shop I, in person mm -hmm. when you buy material for mm -hmm. things that mm -hmm. you're making yeah mm -hmm. no online shopping <laughs> <laughs> but I used to have a I had a fabric shop in Chandler oh well, when was when was this in terms of your career? Was it was it before? It was before. It was okay. before I really started okay. going to shows. But uh, because you know, Larry he worked for the telephone company and sometimes he had to be gone uh, a week or two and uh, and so there was a building there that I thought, Well that would be a good fabric shop. I think I'll try that. And I did, it was so much fun, you know. Wow. And, and then you go down to Dallas and go through all those fabric stores. <laughs> <laughs> so 
also bigger. choosing the fabric was one of the most fun things. Yeah. And, and you uh, were buying it wholesale. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and, uh, and people would come in and, and buy something and, and see if I would make them a dress or something. And I thought, well, sure, I can do it. And I had my two machines. I had one there at the shop and one at home. And uh, yeah, that so was a good setup. Uh -huh. and, and then by that time, I just had the one boy at mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. Everybody else graduated and mm -hmm. on to their things. And, and, uh, and so, therefore, just having one kid at home. And, right. Well, did why did you close the shop? Uh, Larry got transferred to Enid. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we had to sell that house, and we had eighty acres up there, lived out in the country, and oh, and it was kind of an A-frame type house, and it was just really neat. And we had, well, we had pigs and horses, cows. <laughs> And the, and that's where my son, this one, mm -hmm. uh, he had, uh, he showed pigs, and he he won grand champion of Lingett County, wow. and uh, and then he started uh, uh, playing the fiddle, and and then he won third in the state playing his fiddle, and then at school he won. Uh, singing, uh, what was it? He won first on that. God, can't even think. That's it's me. An old he's, Western song. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and he plays native flute, so he's yeah. really. He plays, he plays those now. And, oh, he, he really, he really music. does good yeah. uh, <laughs> doing that. Um, what was one of your favorite markets to go to mm. to sell your work at? Well, I guess Red Earth was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? But, uh, uh, well, it seemed like a lot of different people came. And, uh, and I know this... I, I don't know why people don't, oh, I shouldn't even say that, but this one lady looked at my, all my things on the table and asked me if I did all that, and I says, yes, uh. mm -hmm. and she didn't believe me. My goodness, yeah. Yeah. Right. And then I slapped her. <laughs> Good. Good for you. <laughs> well, um, Le uh, Leslie Deer cites you as having, you know, um, taught her, I think, she referenced a couple of Sack and Fox women that taught her applique, I think, in ribbon work. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've been one of her mentors. Um, well, I don't how think did you guys meet? I don't think I ever taught, taught her, her any sewing techniques. Uh -huh. It was someone I else. Just, that... uh, uh -huh. uh, her mother was married to my cousin. Okay. And they lived in California. Right. And and then he passed away. But when we lived in Shawnee, well, they always came by to see us. To visit, yeah. And then. We'd move all somewhere else. And <laughs> nobody could find us. But, you know, when I started, uh, uh, it seemed like I had, had a lot of fashion shows. Just all, it seemed like I was just busy all the time mm -hmm. doing something. But basically after she moved back to Oklahoma, yeah. You mm -hmm. were able to ask her to be a model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And especially after I moved back <laughs> down here. Right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me a bit about, um, well, Native fashion has really exploded over the years. 
and I wonder what your impressions are of the field now. Well, it seems like since I've quit really being into it like mm -hmm. I was before, I just don't think about it, I guess. And then when Larry retired and we just started just going here and there and everywhere. Well. <laughs> but you still have buyers who won't let you go like mm -hmm. they... Yes. And, and getting that letter from that... No, he called me. Why did he get my phone number? And from Washington State? Uh-huh. Wanted a ribbon shirt. So... And someone had referred him to you uh -huh. as somebody who would make good ribbon shirts. Well, let's talk a little bit about your process and techniques. I'm wondering if your approach to ribbon shirts or shawls or maybe your dresses, because I saw, I think, in your scrapbook a real progression from the skirts with the elastic to these dresses that you know are are just contemporary fashion but they've got a native motif on them mm -hmm. how did your approach to making dresses that were kind of native motif change over the years i still have the same dresses that i've made for myself that i wore wherever i went wow. and, but they're getting too big on me. <laughs> but they've lasted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're hanging in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> and then I made those, uh, uh, I made the coats too, you know. Okay, of, the panel uh, kind of uh -huh. Hudson Bay yeah. type uh -huh. coats. Uh -huh. Pendleton and coats. I made those and uh, we still have those. I made Larry a coat and, uh, and my coat and then my grandson, I made him a little jacket. And we were on the uh, tram, ride this tram up to the mountains in Albuquerque. And uh, we were on there and this guy says, where did you get those coats? I said, oh, I made them. No, he just kept talking about, oh, those coats are so pretty. And, and I just went on and on and on. And he says, well, where did you, where did you get those coats? I said, I made them. And he never said another word. <laughs> he wasn't wasn't going to commission you to do yeah. one. Huh? <laughs> I don't know what. You had to buy it at a store. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, do you have you ever done any any kind of weaving or beadwork or anything? Has it just always been mainly sewing? Just uh, beadwork, I guess. Uh, okay. On some things. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I tried. I just didn't like that. Yeah. What was the hardest thing you ever tried to make in terms of sewing? With those, the dresses that I make with all the applique yes. on them, that was, you had to really measure and right. get that done right and have them meet the same. Right, they're very time yeah. consuming. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then, um, you know, you did share with me that one time you were looking through a, a Western magazine, or I can't remember if it was Cowboys and Indians, you saw this shirt and it kind of inspired you to adapt it a bit. That that was the one, the black one mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. what's his name had on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just tried to make things easy mm -hmm. on myself. And then when you put it on, because some of those clothes were kind of hard to get on and right button or. Whatever, you know, and so I just try to make them easy for people to wear. And right, and it has like this western flavor, but then the native mm -hmm. applique and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. woodland kind of designs. Yeah. yeah, it's a real handsome shirt. 
Did you ever draw out something you were going to sew? Or, like for, if you were experimenting with a dress, it was kind of a native, had a native motif, but it's contemporary dress. Did you ever draw something out for yourself? A lot of sk skirts. I made wrap-around skirts mm -hmm. that tight. Mm -hmm. And put uh, applique on them. Mm -hmm. And so you're drawing out your patterns for your applique. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, because that always involves some pattern drawing. What other kinds of research did you do sometimes? I don't think I had time to do any <laughs> research. <laughs> you had everything in your head already anyway. <laughs> Is there something you'd like to sew that you haven't been able to tackle yet? Didn't have the time or? No, no, not really. I'd like to get all my fabric sewed up into something. <laughs> yeah, you have, you have a good <laughs> You think I have time? A good quantity there. <laughs> I think those two drawers are full. Wow. All out there, and there's a drawer over there. Right. And I, I've got these things like that, like that. Oh, okay. That, that have fabric has, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. And, and there's some right here, and, and there's all those right there. And, right. And I think, oh gosh, I gotta get those sewed up into something or give them away or something. And uh. nobody knows how to sew. Right. I mean, I really think Native women are keeping the art of sewing alive right now mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't sew anymore. Mm -hmm. It used to be kind of a mainstream thing yes. in the 50s. Yes, Because you had to. If you right. wanted, wanted something to wear. Right, right. But, you know, like even the fabric store closed here and just got mm -hmm. one here in Shawnee. But it's just... I don't go in fabric stores anymore. Mm -hmm. I was looking for something. What was I looking for? And I had to ask them, and then they, like they didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> My goodness, that's pretty what discouraging. Was I, for? <laughs> I do want to look at your some of your thread too before we we quit today, because you it's you can see the color the hues and you can see the careful choices of color there. So what's your creative process like um, once you get an idea? Let's say you're, let's just say you're starting a ribbon shirt and... Well, I, I have to plan. Depends on the style. I have to plan. Today, this is all I'm going to do is sew. Okay. And, uh, and then I come out here and uh, and have my pattern. Do you and, get out in the morning? You, Do you mm -hmm. get over here in the morning? Mm -hmm. Yes. I can sew all day. <laughs> but, you know, it's just cutting everything out and uh, getting everything put together and then Sometimes, you know, it'll take me today to do that and decide what color ribbon will go on this, mm -hmm. if I need to buy some, mm -hmm. or, you know, anything like that. But when I was really into the business, I went down to uh, uh, Dallas mm -hmm. and got everything that I, that I needed, you know, all all my ribbon work, all my threads and, and whatever, you know, things like that, that I didn't have to run to the store all the time. I see, you bought in quantity, mm -hmm. you went down mm -hmm. there. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes the color fabric that the men like. Right. It was always blue. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the color that sells the best. <laughs> uh -huh. and, uh, and just getting started and coming out and and uh, 
uh, what I'm going to do first and just do it the same way. So I everything's did. kind of cut out on the first day and then mm -hmm. the second day mm -hmm. you're putting mm -hmm. it together. Yes. Do you have several sewing machines now? I see, I think just one. Yeah. That, I have that one there, mm -hmm. and I have one out there, but I've got several that don't work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you just have to keep all all those things going, get them tuned up every now and then, and, right. and do things like that, and uh, it just, so they don't break down while you're sewing and trying to get something done and and sometimes people wait to the last minute or they don't know until the last minute that they're going to have a shirt. Right. And so uh, I can sew on that in a hurry if I had to. But it's just always nice to just plan a day and just get it done. Right, right. And you mentioned that every place you've gone with Larry every place you've moved you've always had your sewing room. Oh yes. Why is that important to have that space apart? You know I think uh, people need something to do when they're not working and then you know when you have kids at home and you have to look after them nobody looks after their kids anymore mm -hmm. but we always had a good time. When you were sewing and raising your your young children, did they hang out in where you were working? Well, yes. <laughs> they run their cars all around the sewing machine, <laughs> around the table. Women know how to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> does your daughter do any sewing? Not very much, but she does sew for her grandchildren, mm -hmm. and uh, but she she. The state farm agents, so she can't do all that much. Right. And, uh, but she does so for them a lot. Two mm -hmm. little girls, so <laughs> that helped. <laughs> and do you go to a lot of the dances? Uh, when I you can. I used to, uh, but it seems like not anymore. They're changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not like the old days. Mm -hmm. But just remembering all the songs and dancing, and, and then besides, my legs can't dance anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Time to watch on, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, looking back over your um, career, your sewing career, what was a fork in the road for you where you? Maybe could have tried another, express you know outlet for expressing yourself, or where you ended up thinking, I can support myself sewing. What was that fork in the road? I I don't know. It just seemed like I always knew how to sew. And somebody was always asking me to make something, and okay, I'll make it. Right, right. But you know, when you really like doing something, it doesn't feel like work so yeah. much. Uh huh. I just wish somebody would clean up my room. <laughs> <laughs> what was, what was one of the high points in your sewing career? What's been one of the high points? Ooh. Oh my goodness. You know, it's just getting to meet all these different people. And they were just always so nice and pleasant and easy to talk to and and they always always talk to me. And sometimes it wasn't easy for me getting into this business, but mm -hmm. it is now. What's been one of the low points? I 
just didn't think people should be so mean to me sometimes. <laughs> kind of customers people. who weren't easy to deal with or... It was never the customer. Mm. And it just... Uh, at a, at a market or a festival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But most of the time it was just fun and pleasant. Mm -hmm. And so you don't think about those lot right. of times when everything is going your way. Right, right. Um, and you did mention, in terms of the price range of your clothing, what did you strive for in terms of your pricing? Well, I tried to think of the people and what they could afford. Mm -hmm. And if I said, well, if it would take me three hours to make this, I can charge mm -hmm. $10 an hour mm -hmm. or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. and because a lot of people think sewing a ribbon shirt is really hard to do. And it isn't to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> For some of us, it would be. <laughs> it wouldn't be three hours. <laughs> But yeah, keeping things affordable for people has always been one of your mm -hmm. one of your concerns. Well, I notice we're wrap going to wrap up, but I did I do see you and Larry at shows frequently, even though you don't you're not doing markets anymore. Um, and sometimes you you come with your friend Leslie, I guess. Uh, do you what is it about that that you still enjoy? being at a market but not necessarily having to work at what what's fun about that? Uh it is enjoyable. Uh -huh. And and I look at what people are doing mm -hmm. and uh, and then I don't realize sometimes that those people remember me. And mm -hmm. oh well I remember him now. And uh Anyway, we'll just I could just stand there and talk to. Talk <laughs> or to they're everyone. wearing a shirt that you've made. Yeah. And you uh, just happen to notice it. Mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's neat. It, it seems like a nice way of keeping your kind of keeping your hand mm -hmm. in a in a way. Yeah. yeah. And and it's like uh, like they finally met me and could talk to me and I could talk to them. Uh huh. But it it is nice. It's a different to quality see. of visiting. Mm -hmm. You can do a different kind of visiting. Yes. Yes. When you're just babysitting the booth for a little bit or mm -hmm. something. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes I didn't have time to talk to sure. everybody. Sure. When I was working and mm -hmm. at a show, mm -hmm. it just uh, and now. Now, now it's easy. I'm like, oh gosh, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's neat. Well, this is a, not a career point, but I think it's really interesting that you and Larry recently took a hot air balloon ride. <laughs> what was that like? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was so pleasant. It was just. You know, we were out there, and every morning, you'd get up and see those hot air balloons up there in the sky. And I, gosh, that just looks so pretty. And uh, I told Larry, I'd, I'd like to ride one of them. He says, me too. We'll just do that. And But, you know, just being really busy with Leslie and trying to get her situated over there and uh, uh, and helping her and been there for her. And so we just got us a ticket and jumped on there and it, it was so pleasant. It, you know, can't believe there was eight people on there besides the Wow the driver. The guy who was driving. But yeah. And uh, but 
they were just so pleasant. And then champagne breakfast didn't oh. hurt. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Wow, that's a nice little <laughs> perk. <laughs> and this was in Albuquerque, right? That you did. Phoenix. Oh, in Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> oh, it was. It was. <laughs> and I called called my daughter and uh, and told her what we did. And she Oh, Mom, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And even... My son up here, he says, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> it was, it's just funny that they, they thought that. And then everybody we told, they said, oh, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> well, maybe if I was younger, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're getting more adventuresome. <laughs> Oh, that's something to look forward to. Well, is there anything else we need to talk about or you'd like to talk about before we take a look at your ribbon shirts? Oh, I think we said it all. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time, Wendy, Adeline. So, Adeline, do you want to tell us about your dress that you have made here? And this is your personal dress. Yes. And it's... Uh, it's just a A-line form mm -hmm. and uh, two different fabrics, mm -hmm. and and the ribbon work. Right, right. Through there, it looks like lightning. Yes. And since I'm Thunder Clan, I chose that. That's gorgeous. And uh, and put the uh, silver silver ornaments on there. Right. Like they look like mini concho buttons on. <gasps> wow. Oh my goodness, isn't the back of that beautiful too? Yes, like that. Oh, it's gorgeous. And I saw your tag <laughs> <laughs> yes. inside. That is just stunning. I bet that looks gorgeous on you too. This is just a beautiful skirt. Can you talk a little bit about the material and some of the... Well, that's taffeta and that sack and fox design. Mm-hmm. And, and on some velvet, mm -hmm. is it velveteen? Uh-huh. And that's the skirt mm -hmm. itself. This, this is my dress that I wore when I was 16. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Here's the shirt. This was your... Sack and Fox outfit. It is beautiful. Oh, I took them. I took them all. <laughs> I must have had to use them. <laughs> you must have needed the ribbon. <laughs> yes, that's. Oh. And the pleats. I missed the pleats in the back. Yeah, oh, that is just beautiful detail there. I did all that. Mm hmm. And you made it then when you were sixteen too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And this this is what I what I wore. But, so it's very old. Yes, and it looks like it was made. I mean, it's held up beautifully. And how about this dress? I've had. I love the design. I've had that a long time, but just I could wear it to to any dance. Right. And. Uh, Sack and Fox, Kickapoo, or Shawnee, right. whatever, and uh, uh, I had I have one necklace, uh -huh. but I gave it to my granddaughter. Oh, yes, <laughs> well, yes. but that's that was, special. That was a, another old dress that I wore. Right, like like this one here. But it is beautiful. I like that fabric. Oh, what a beautiful blouse. They made these blouses, but they had the blouse, the collar on the blouse. Mm -hmm. Wow, and you made it so it will come off. That is such a cool design thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, somebody needed my skirt. <laughs> <laughs> but this was so easy to do. Ah, oh, it's and, pretty. Uh, and everybody liked that. Yes, it's really. a great idea. <laughs> Sometimes you didn't have to take this off and wash this. Right, exactly. And especially if you had those uh, silver. Right, right. That oh, that's summer. really neat. So your summer dress, as you uh -huh. were saying. Uh -huh. and, and sometimes I just wore a uh, beaded pin mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the front there, in the yeah. earrings. but it has a belt too. Okay, yeah. Full skirt, like uh -huh. you said, with pockets. Mm -hmm. With pockets. That's neat. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The longer sleeve and uh, use those fringes on there, been washable. Yes. And uh, have a white necklace that I wore and... Uh, Oh, sure, that would show it My off really nice. Cowboy nicely. boots. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great touch. <laughs> oh, how pretty. <laughs> you know, it was always interesting to, to wear something. And, yeah, and stand and, out. Yeah, and people knew that I made it. And they knew that you were, that was your business, too. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. I didn't make this. Right. This uh, lady... Little Shirley, we called her Little Shirley. Mm. She was married to my brother, mm -hmm. and and then when he passed away, well, her mother made this. It's a Kickapoo shirt, mm -hmm. and it just has a different way they put things together. Right. And uh, and she knew I would want want that. Yes. It seemed like they never put buttons on these things. Uh huh. And there's a longer and kind of a, this way. A ruffle cuff. And, uh, and I don't know how old this is. Wow. It's nice to have that, that to pattern time. after. Yes. That's, yes. That's beautiful. And uh, I was glad she made that for me. Yeah. Or gave it to me. Okay, but this, this here is a ribbon shirt that you made. Yes. And it's the. That's a Saga Saga Fox. Saga Fox, uh -huh. Yeah, Saga Fox mm -hmm. style, so people mm -hmm. can see the difference here. Yeah, and just beautifully ironed and <laughs> beautiful material. <laughs> and washable. And washable. I haven't got the buttons and buttholes on it. Not only that, the tag in, in there, but uh, uh, sometimes uh, people don't realize that Two, you know, two pig layered in there. Two uh huh. Pieces. Okay. The, the yoke. Yes. And uh, right. But everybody always likes blue. Right. You mentioned that's the favorite color. You changed the color of the fringe because you mm -hmm. just had it white initially. Yeah. Oh, it's so striking though with the white applique background. That's beautiful. Yes. See? Yes. Yeah, it makes it a rainbow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> rainbow effect. All right. While you're doing that, I'm just going to get your bobbins of thread here real quick so people can see all the beautiful colors. All right. Well, thank you so much for, for taking time out to do this. <laughs> <laughs>